welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Um, you may have watched uh, my other video on the wing joiner system experiments that I'm doing. If you haven't, go watch that first, then come back and watch this one. Um, here I'm showing the uh, items that I'm preparing for testing. Uh, these parts are going to go to a lab in Texas that's going to do uh, pull testing on them and test them in tensile strength. So what I've done here is I've taken the uh, lugs that I created, these carbon fiber lugs that have a brass tube in them for the pin, and I've bonded them to these carbon fiber panels. These panels will be put in a tensile testing machine and they'll be pulled apart. We'll see what comes apart part first, whether it's the panels or the lugs or the pin. Uh, the pin that I have in here is a pull-truded carbon fiber um, rod. It has approximately the same shear strength as a grade 8 aircraft bolt. Uh, I'm thinking of using these uh, to actually join the wing halves together. So you, you see I can pull this out of here and I've bonded the lugs to the panels and I've provided a little bit of a gap between each uh, plug so that it would be easy to uh, put the two wing halves together. It's not too snug of a fit and then the pin goes in this way. Uh, there would be four of these panels that's discussed in the other video. Uh, I did some analysis and found out that you can leave gaps up to say 25, 30, 40 thousandths of an inch between the lugs before you start putting um, too much load into the pin. Uh, so you can leave a little bit of gap here and make it easy to slide the parts together where alignment is not a huge issue. So I've bonded these on to the panels with uh, Scotch Weld 420. Uh, this is available on Amazon. It is a extremely high strength uh, structural adhesive. Uh, the T88 that I normally use for structural adhesive runs about, oh, I think it's somewhere between 2000 and 2500 PSI on lap shear strength. Uh, it's typical of an adhesive of that uh, type, uh, very good structural adhesive. However, this adhesive has more than double. Uh, the Scotchweld uh, 420 runs on up to about 4,500 PSI in lap shear strength. Now, uh, a quart size kit of the T88 runs about $35. Uh, this one single little setup of the 420 is about $22 on Amazon. So you get more than double the sheer strength, uh, but you're paying way more uh, in price. But in some particular cases, uh, that really high strength is going to be needed, and it's willing to. Uh, I'm willing to spend that amount of money to get that kind of bond strength. Now, these uh, lugs are simply uh, bonded to the panels uh, with this adhesive. Uh, I've calculated that there's sufficient square inches here to uh, uh, utilize the full strength of the lugs uh, without failing uh, the bond itself. Uh, however, on a couple of these lugs, I'm going to drill through uh, in a couple of spots, uh, 16th inch diameter holes, and I'm going to bond in 16th inch diameter pultruded carbon fiber rods as shear pins. And just in case that the bond should fail prematurely, uh, we'll find out whether the shear pins uh, make that attachment any stronger or not, whether they're actually needed. My preference in building the aircraft is simply to bond parts together. It's the lightest weight way to do it, and there are so many lugs that are going to be involved in the system. There's redundancy. I don't believe that there'll be any issue uh, with having uh, debond problems or pulling the uh, uh, bonded parts off of the panels. Uh, the bo total bond strength here runs five, six, uh, maybe ten times the amount of strength uh, that's in the panel or the lugs themselves. So I sincerely doubt that any of these uh, bonded parts are going to pull loose of the panel. But we'll see when we get to the lab. Anyway, that's those two panels. Now what I have over here uh, are is the layout process for the uh, lugs that I'm going to send for testing just the lugs. In this case, uh, in the case I just showed you, I'm testing the lug attachment to the panels and the panels themselves. These components will be uh, used for just testing the strength of the lugs. I have a half inch uh, inside diameter 4130 chrome molly tube here uh, attached to uh, the carbon fiber uh, 
components that actually form the lugs themselves. What I've done here is I have a um, half inch thick uh, piece of uh, foam core. I've uh, covered that with packing tape. You can see it better that way. The first layer is uh, two ounce uh, carbon fiber. Actually, this on the inside, there's a layer of uh, peel ply underneath to leave a rough surface on the inside uh, for bonding uh, these lugs onto the test fixture. Uh, then there's some two ounce uh, carbon fiber cloth here, and then the uh, a bushing is bonded onto the front end of that. You can see that the, the gap between the panel and the bushing is filled with uh, structural adhesive there. Uh, that uh, provides a smooth, flat surface for doing the overwrap. Now, here I've laid up a bidirectional uh, carbon fiber cloth. Uh, each layer is uh, standard 5.6 ounce fabric, uh, plain weave. And I've laid up uh, enough layers here so that I have essentially uh, eighth inch thick uh, panel uh, equivalent to this, about an eighth of an inch thick there. Uh, this is three sixteenths, and this is full quarter inch on both sides. I cut away a little bit here that you can see you get a better look at it. It's actually a little over a quarter inch. We'll measure these when they're actually done and go back and do more calculations and get an estimate of what its strength will be. Uh, I'm going to cut these into strips this way, uh, cut off the extra on the end uh, so that I can uh, have multiple parts to uh, do run multiple tests. Uh, I'll probably be able to pull two parts here, two parts here, one part here, and that'll be sufficient for testing. We'll get enough data uh, to say uh, this is how strong these parts are. This was a wet layup by hand. It was not vacuum bagged. I was worried about vacuum bagging in terms of if I wrapped the whole thing and squeezed down on it that I would oval out uh, the front end, which would be bad. I want to keep this a nice round radius. So by doing a wet layup with no vacuum bag, the parts come out a little bit heavier, uh, but we can tolerate that extra weight so that we get the appropriate shape up front. I suspect that uh, in the final go, uh, I will, uh, once the lug thickness is picked, I will lay up that thickness along the whole strip like this so I can cut enough lugs out uh, that it, for the whole spar so I have enough to uh, join the two wing halves together. And uh, when I do that layout process, I will probably create a matching mold to go on the outside uh, such that I can put that mold over it vacuum bag it, put in the appropriate bleeder cloth uh, to suck up the extra resin and get the weight of the parts down. But I thought I'd show you this before I cut it up. We'll have a little time lapse of me cutting this up and then I'll show you the lugs at the end that are going to go off to the lab and when the lab results come in uh, I'll post the uh, finished video. Uh, that would be a month or so from now. So uh, in your time a matter of seconds. Me a month. So uh, hang in there for a few moments and watch the time lapse of me cutting up the parts. I'll be back to explain those parts and then off to the lab. Okay, here we are. We're out at the wet tile saw. This is just a standard uh, diamond blade wet saw, normally used for cutting uh, tile for flooring and so forth. I like to use it to uh, cut my carbon fiber components. Uh, it makes a nice clean edge and keeps the parts cool and prevents uh, delamination of the layup. Uh, all good things. So I'm just going to cut right through the mold and everything else. The mold's disposable and let's fire up that time lapse and you can watch me make some parts. parts cut out. We have uh, six usable good parts here. Uh, primary uh, for testing and backup. We have uh, three thicknesses to work with here. I'll be collecting the data for these three which will allow me to plot a curve 
uh, that'll give me the strength per thickness I hope and we essentially have a little over an eighth of an inch here uh, we have just about dead nuts on a quarter inch on this one and these are just shy of three eighths uh, their exact thickness is not critical at this point because we're just going to test them to failure they don't need to hit a particular number and then once I have that data I'll be able to plot that curve and it'll I'll be able to extrapolate that curve so I can calculate what's needed for uh, the actual final wing. So what they're going to do at the lab, they're going to uh, mount this on a steel plate. They're going to bond it to a steel plate, be put up in a test fixture, they're going to pull on this end, they'll put a pin through here, grab it this way, pull down this way, and they'll pull until it fails. Uh, the idea is to provide a large bonding surface here uh, so that there isn't a failure back in here or a failure in the bond I'm not interested in testing that aspect of the design what I'm interested in testing is the pullout strength of the hoop that goes around the bushing where the pins going to go through um, and hopefully this design will isolate the test to that area so essentially how these are going to work let me grab one of the thinner ones here that's a little easier to work with uh, if you've watched the video on the wing joiner system you'll see this mock-up and uh, this is how these parts will be used uh, in the final design this would be bonded on here like so uh, there'd be ones that are bonded on uh, the vertical here this way so we'd have across here, down here, across bottom, and up the main spar, and uh, I'll grab one of these other ones here. They'll be matching ones like this. So we have uh, alternating uh, lugs like this that join the wing halves together. Pin goes through on all four of those, holds the two wing halves together. These are very low profile. They can be embedded inside the wing, so we don't have to worry about putting some other type of cap over the center. All of this will just butt together and close up nice and tight. No extra piece required and uh, there'll be access from underneath so that the uh, pilot or who's ever putting the wing together can assemble the components. So overall I'm very happy with these parts and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what we get for results. Uh, give you a little better look. That's kind of what these are going to go together like and uh, this should be very cost effective on weight and easy to make as we just saw you can mold them up on a nice simple mold slice them off and you got all your pieces for creating the wing joint so stand by uh, I'll be back in a month or two uh, with the test results to show you and for you it'll be the blink of an eye and I'll see you then bye